share this with you today. We're in a series called Attached. We're in a series called Attached. This series, I've gotten probably, I think I have gotten more messages about this series than I have any other series we've done this year. And I think last week was the first time we opened it up. It just literally, my phone has been blowing up with people saying, Apostle, I am having to rethink my life. And I love to hear that. If you come here to this broadcast or attend this ministry and you never have to rethink your life, then I am not doing my job. I want you to rethink everybody you're connected to. I want you to rethink about the way that you think. I want you to re-examine everything you've ever believed. I want you to re-examine your foundation because it is only through a healthy thought process that you will be ushered into the prophetic destiny that God has for your life. Let's get into this attached. Uh, let's go to Luke. I think Luke is our first scripture. We'll go to Luke, and then we're going to jump over um, uh, to Matthew. Awesome. Let's get ready to read this. If you can't find it, just look on the screen. All right, it says, verse 39, And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste into a city of Judah and entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. Listen, all she did was say, hey, and something started leaping. And she spake out with a loud voice and said, blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence is this to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in my ears, the baby leaped in my womb for joy. And blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. Jump over to Matthew 18 and verse 19. Again I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask it shall be done for them of my father which is in heaven i want to minister from the subject you had me at hello you had me at hello father i bless you for your anointing i thank you for your power and your spirit i ask you oh god that as this word goes forth you would destroy yokes you would heal bodies you would transform minds you would shoot us into another realm of existence comprehension and perception we glorify you for what you're going to do in this place we glorify you for what you're going to do in every home and most of all we glorify you for what you're going to do in every mind we thank you for the word and the sword of the spirit in the strong name of jesus christ that we pray all that agree said is so and so it is or the way that you'll see say you had me at hello i want to share some things with you that are going to be very critical for the next eight months of your life the Spirit of the Lord began to deal with me concerning some things prophetically. As we've entered into this series, the Lord spoke to me and said, there's some things that I want to do for them, in them, around them, and through them that I cannot do if they don't posture themselves around the right people, if they don't posture themselves around the right people. Many of us, we have the right anointing, we have the right gift, we have the right vision, we have the right business plan, we have the right marketing strategy. The problem is, is that we have the wrong people. Think it not strange that even with a marketing plan, most of the people that excel in marketing do not have a business background. Most of the people that excel in marketing have a psychology 
psychology background because in order to market something to a group of people, you must first know the way that they think. You must know the way that they think, the way that they process. Uh, you also need a sociological background to understand the atmosphere, the climate in which they are in in order to tap into their desires. It is important that you understand that if you don't learn how to operate around people, you are never going to move into the promise. I told you last week, and I want you to really hear this, I told you last week that elevation is connected to revelation. There is revelation, and after revelation, there's elevation. But that elevation is symbolized by relationships, which means God either brings me into new relationships or the Lord begins to elevate the way which the people that I'm connected to interact with. There are some people who grow with you and there are some people that go with you. I want to share this with you. Um, there is something that has happened today um, and I'm very, 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 very concerned. Something has happened uh, and I believe it has come by way of technology where many people have tried to master intimate connection without authentic vulnerability. And part of the reason why we have mastered intimate connection without authentic vulnerability is because of social media. Social media gives me the ability to create an entire persona and perception of what I want you to think about me and who I want you to think that I am and who I want you to believe that I am. I want to create this persona that I'm busy, that I got something going on, that I'm doing something with my life. Social media has made some of us professional actors. We have learned how to put on the right filter. We have learned how to put on the right uh, 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 picture. We skim through the pictures. Some of you all, if you're like me, you take about 30 pictures so you can have some options to pick and choose. You're only going to upload about two of them, but you just took about 30 pictures because you got to make sure that you show yourself in the best light. And I'm not necessarily saying that there's anything wrong with wanting to be presented and making sure that what you are putting forth is worthy of your audience. But what I am sharing with you is that there must be some relationships in your life that don't require a filter. There must be some relationships in your life that does not require a selfie. There must be some relationships in your life that exist outside of Facebook. And here's the challenge is that some of us, listen, we have mastered telling people that we praying for them and you post under their status saying, oh child, I'm praying for you and you ain't prayed at all. You ain't even pray over your food. Tell my you praying for them. Can I share something with you? In this season, God is requiring for you to develop authentic relationships. Now listen, I told you about three critical relationships last week. I told you that there is a relationship of humility, there is a relationship of sacrifice, and there is a relationship of vulnerability. There is a relationship of humility, there is a relationship of sacrifice, and there is a relationship of vulnerability. Uh, uh, the relationship of, of, of humility is the relationships that you are submitted under. Those are the individuals Individuals that you are not trying to be their best friend, but you are trying to receive what's in them. In order for me to receive the poor that is in you, I must posture myself under the pitcher. The cup and the pitcher cannot operate from the same plane and the cup receive what's in the pitcher. You have to be in a posture to receive the poor. Now see, this is the issue. If you have been damaged by former relationships and you have been damaged uh, 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 particularly, thank you, Holy Ghost, by parental relationships, then you will find yourself having an inability to receive poor from anybody. You will only sit at tables where you know the information already. You will only engage in activities that you are familiar with. You will only engage in uh, propositions that, are, that you are accustomed to, that you have done all of your life. This is the issue. If you're going to get to a place you've never been before, it is going to require that you humble yourself in order to receive levels of wisdom and impartation that you may not have. Now see, this is the problem. Is, is this 
this generation has almost demonized uh, uh, phrases that would imply that you are submitted, that would imply a uh, 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 sonship. We say, oh, he just sonned you, man. He just sonned you. I can't believe he just sonned you. We have literally begun to take phrases that were designed to notate relationship that is based upon poor and demonized it. It is a demonic assignment of the enemy to get us in a place to where we cannot authentically receive what it is that we need in order to go to the next level. And, and I want to share this with you. Some relationships require humility. That Some relationships require humility. If you are obnoxious, you cannot receive what I'm saying. Because obnoxious people have to take every opportunity to show people what they know and to tell people what they know and to tell you how much information they have. Can I share something with you? And I, and, and I pray, I, I don't think he would mind me saying this. Uh, uh, my spouse, when my spouse first came to this church, my spouse told me, uh, um, uh, I said, well, you don't come to Bible study. I said, why don't you come to Bible study? And he said to me, well, I was born and raised in the church. So I feel all that kind of stuff already know already. It's just 66 books in the Bible. I mean, everything that's in there is in there. I figured, you know, I just know what's in there. And so finally, I said, well, I encourage you to come. After coming to Bible class at this here church, even though he was born and raised in Pentecost, after coming to this here church, he said, I have seen some stuff up in here that I have never seen in the church, in the Bible. He said, I ain't never seen nobody levitate till I came to powerhouse. I've never seen demons scream up out of people out of the back. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying in here. I've never seen people just jump out of wheelchairs in the middle of offering. He said, and some of the things that I've been taught, he said, I thought it was one heaven. I didn't even realize there were three, three heavens. He said, I had no idea. Can I share something with you? You. you will be lost and limited if you assume that you have everything that God has for us to have in these last and evil days. If you think that you know everything there is to know, I don't care how long you've been in the church, never lose your hunger. God, I praise you. Never lose your thirst and never lose your hunger. The problem with many of us is that we think that the only one that has something to release is us. You don't want to hear this because some of us only get anointed when we get the mic. Some of us only come to Bible class if we teach in the class. Some of us only want to come to the service if we're the one preaching the sermon. Can I share something with you? You have put yourself in a dangerous posture because what I have realized is that I am forever undone. The moment that I think that I have figured it out, the Lord shows me another side and says, you still got some cleaning up to do. Now, some of y'all not going to be real in here. You're not going to be honest that there are some parts of you that the Lord is still working on. There are some parts of you that God is still processing. There are some things in your mind and in your spirit that the Lord is still delivering you from. And the moment you have postured yourself beyond the poor, you are no longer qualified to lead. Your leadership should be measured by your fellowship. If you don't want to be a part of of the usher board unless you are the chief captain of the usher board you don't want to move the usher board forward you want a position and a title because when you really want to see something grow and develop you are willing watch this to be a servant in it even if you don't have a title or a collar i'm preaching good in this room david said listen they made me the king but the truth is i just wanted to be a doorkeeper i really didn't even ask for it most of the people that god is calling don't even want it y'all don't hear what i'm saying most of the people that the lord is anointing didn't even ask for it i didn't want it i just wanted to be a heaven maker i just wanted to be saved but in my posture of humility my willingness to serve you don't have to take pictures of me vacuuming the floor I I do it by myself. I can't hear nobody in this room. I have never seen this before, but there is something going on in this generation where we want to watch this. We will skip over a piece of paper on the floor to get to the mic. We'll skip over trash to get to the mic. Tell me something. The Lord called me to serve. If the Lord called you to serve, then watch this. My anointing, I feel the anointing all over me. Can I tell you something? There is a versatility to the anointing. The anointing is not tied to a title. And see, this is the issue, is that many of us are anointed, but we are not appointed. 
and, 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 and being anointed does not make you appointed. Being anointed means, watch this, that I have the ability to become all things for all men so that I can win some to Christ, which means, listen, it doesn't even matter if I'm not gifted to do it. We have moved out of the realm of gift and into anointing, which means if there is a need in the house, the anointing of God in my life has the ability to fulfill the need in the house, even if that's not my gift or my desired position, which means I don't want to do it, but I'm going to do it because I'm graced and anointed. David was called to be king, but he started off as a heart player. And before he was a heart player, he was a sheep handler. And the Lord, I feel the Lord in this place say, what you don't realize is the thing that you don't want to do is the process that's preparing you for the thing that you feel called to. There is a lesson in the sheep. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. There is a lesson in the harp. And you so focus on, I really don't want to do this. I don't want to play a harp. And I didn't, God didn't call me to play a harp. The prophecy that I got said that you're going to be a king. But can I tell you something? The Lord said, I got to teach discipline in your fingers before I can put you in a seat. He teaches our hands to fight and our fingers to war. I got to teach you discipline in your spirit so that you're, watch this, watch this. You're shoveling sheep dung and rebuking wolves. Can I tell you something? It is not until God can get the discipline in your spirit that he's able to take you to your destiny. Your destiny does not just require your dance. It requires your discipline. And the church wants to dance, but she don't want to be disciplined. You want to dance, but you don't want to learn how to talk to people. Oh, he's going to take me to sit me up before the mayor, honey. I'm bigger than church folk. I'm going before the governor. You'll be kicked out. Y'all not at? Somebody shout act right. Can I tell you something? Oh, God, I praise you in this place. Can I share something with you? You've got to understand something. That in order for you to get to the place that you're going to get to, it's going to require humility. Next is going to require sacrifice. There are relationships of sacrifice. Can I tell you something? Anybody that, that, that sees ministry and you think that this is something that is not, let me tell you something. If you think that this is collars and adjutants and all of the above, let me tell you something. You can have all that. I, I, I want to promise you this. It is not what you think. The level of warfare that you have to deal with in order to be able to be used by God, the level of warfare, the level of sacrifice. Now, listen, what we think is that sacrifice is submission. No, submission is submission. That ain't sacrifice. Sacrifice. That's just something you're supposed to do. If you really were intelligent and not controlled by your rejection, you will understand that submission is for your benefit. <laughs> That's your protection. That ain't got nothing to do with Listen, let me tell you something. The best thing that I have ever done is when I take that month in October and go on a sabbatical and sit at the feet of those that pour into me. Can I tell you something? It is a blessing. Woo! to be able to sit in a posture where you don't have to be anything but poured into, where you don't have to be anything but receive, where you don't have to be anything but prepare for the next level because a day is going to come where you're going to wish that you had the voice of those that are pouring into you and you're going to have to figure it out. Can I tell you something? Over the last few weeks, I've had a great appreciation for, 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 for the, uh, the men and women of God that the Lord has used to rear my anointing. I've had a greater appreciation for them that I wish I could bring them back from the dead and ask them, what would you do in this situation? What would you do? How would you handle this? How would you do this? Why? Because can I tell you something? Do you not know the right poor will help you to skip over some trials and some tribulations that there's some stuff that you can bypass because of the anointing that is on somebody else's life, the level of consecration that they walk into, that they can lay hands on you and transfer an anointing that took them two years of laying on their belly to get from God that took them a year of consecration and fasting and you come through one line and one hit and every lineage, everything in their spiritual DNA will enter into your body and the fire of God will come on you in one second God can give to you what it took ten years to get to them can I tell you something, the Lord is trying to get you to save time look at your neighbor and say he's trying to save time oh don't you understand 
says to make time, baby. Can I tell you something? The devil knows that he cannot disrupt your destiny, but he can make you waste time. And the Lord is saying, I'm challenging your relationships so that you don't waste the next five years trying to correct something that I never even called you to get into in the first place. Can I tell you something? I, I feel the Lord. The Lord told me to tell you the right relationships will save you time. The Lord is trying to tell somebody in this room, if you haven't learned anything else from this pandemic, you watching me live, if you haven't learned anything else from this pandemic, is that you can be here today and gone today. You don't have time in this season to be wasting on people that are not connected to your prophetic destiny. Listen, if they are there and you don't know why they are there, it is time to remove them. There are relationships of humility there are relationships of sacrifice and there are relationships of vulnerability. Can I tell you something? You cannot build all your relationships through social media. I know some people that got a long distance demon. You have never been with anybody that lives within a 60 mile radius. Everybody that you date and get to know you way out in New York and everybody you date lives in Alabama. And I'm going to tell you why that is. Oh, you're going to preach, Apostle? Yes, 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 I am. I'm going to tell you why that is. The reason why you do that is because you want intimacy without vulnerability. You want to connect to people, but you don't want anybody to see you. Because everybody in your hometown know you want games. So you done got on Facebook. And listen, just because you're using your real picture don't mean you ain't catfishing. Because some of us catfish with statuses and words. And I tell you something, catfishing ain't just done with pictures. Catfishing is being done by people not being honest about the fact that you are not emotionally mature enough for the level of relationship you're pursuing. You are catfishing them. Can I share something with you? The Spirit of the Lord says in this season, he says, stay right there. Some of you all, some of you all do long distance ministry. I'm going to stay right there. Can I tell you something? If you can't be affirmed by the people that see you every week, but you find affirmation over in South Africa where you ain't never been and don't even have a passport to get to, but you done found affirmation on the other side of the country and the other side of the world, no, what it is is you don't want anybody to correct you that can see your lifestyle. You think because you are anointed, you are okay. And anybody that affirmed you that they never said in front of you is crazy. I'm preaching good. Anybody that affirmed you that has never sat down with you is crazy. Anybody, let me tell you something. When you went to get your driver's license, did, 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 did the instructor look on your Facebook and say, well, she looked like she can drive. She got arms like she can drive. So we're going we gonna to email you this driver's license by faith because I just feel in my spirit that you're going to get behind this car and you're not going to kill nobody. Can I tell you something? That's an idiot. Anybody that will affirm something that they have not said, well, I see in the spirit, you ain't that deep. Can I tell you something? There are some stuff, I don't care how prophetic you are, that you will not see in people until you get naked and vulnerable with them. There are some stuff you won't see in them until you make them mad. There's some stuff you won't see in them until you spend time with them. Every demon don't manifest at hello. Every demon don't manifest when you first meet them. There are some things in people that you need time to see. You need time to process. I need to see you when you don't feel like doing ministry. I feel the Lord in here. I need to see you on the day when you don't feel like coming to church. I wish I had some real people in here. I need to see you on days when you don't feel like praising the Lord. Because if I allow you to go forth based on your feelings, then what we are doing is training you to operate from a ramification that that all the enemy has to do is get on your nerves and you don't quit. It is not until you realize, thank you, Jesus. It is not until you realize, I want you to hear me. It is not until you realize that your life affects other people that we cannot push you forward. It is not until you realize that in leadership, your decisions don't only affect you. Can I tell you something? In this season, the Lord said, you got to get around the right people 
You got to get connected to the right individuals, listen, that are not going to patronize you, but the right individuals that have the power to quicken what's in your spirit. The right individuals that have the power to stir what's in your spirit. The right individuals that have the power to instruct what is in your spirit. Can I tell you something? Until you have begun to come into a realization that what God is doing through you has never been done before, that you will not realize the importance of having the right connections and the right relationships. Can I share something with you? In this season, I need you to hear this. The Lord told me to tell you three things. When it comes to the people you're connecting to, and I want you to hear this on every level. I want you to hear, as a matter of fact, campus pastors, I want you to hear what I'm telling you. This applies to how you are going to build your leadership team. This applies to how you are going to create the infrastructure with what God is doing in your ministry. I want you to hear this. Every person that has ever loved anybody, anybody in this room, you think you have found the one, anybody in this room. And listen, I want us to look deeper than just romantic relationships. Some of us can't get prophetic relationships right because we're too busy looking to get somebody in our bed everybody don't belong in your bed everybody don't belong in your bed you are not jay holiday you cannot put everybody to bed there are some people in your life that you are not supposed to put to bed and just because you are attracted to them does not mean that you have to sleep with them stop letting your rejection control your loins don't you know every time you lay down with somebody you receive an impartation I can't stand when church folk be like, I don't want people laying hands on me. You transferring spirits. Can I tell you something? Every time you sleep with somebody, they transfer the spirit into you. I want to share something with you that you've got to understand. You've got to understand this with the relationships you're creating. Number one, if it doesn't fit, don't force it. If it doesn't fit, don't force it. Stop trying to make stuff fit. Stop trying to make relationships work. Now listen, if you have had to stop talking to them 10 times in the last two weeks, maybe, somebody say maybe, maybe y'all ain't supposed to be together. And I'm not just talking about romantic relationships. I'm talking about friendships too. Well, let me teach you how to be a friend of me. Let me teach you how to be. Listen, if it don't, listen, if it doesn't fit, don't force it. Number two, stop trying to make people agree with you. Can I tell you something? Look at somebody say, learn the power of Okay. Just, okay. There's some people you have to just learn how to just say, okay, you, you can have that. I'm not going to go back and forth with you. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to keep arguing with you about what I'm living. I'm not going to keep, listen, if you want to keep believing that, that's your business. But in this season, I'm not going to argue. Can I tell you something? Some people you need to learn how to not even respond to. Before you even respond, decide, is this worthy of my response? Should I give you my energy today? Because you might be under a diabolical assignment to drain me right before I get connected to a divine opportunity. You've got to be, let me tell you something. There are some times I just don't pick up the phone. And I don't necessarily not pick up the phone because I'm busy. I don't necessarily not pick up the phone because I'm preaching. Because I ain't preaching 24 hours a day. I don't necessarily not pick up the phone uh, because I'm, I'm talking to First G. Sometimes I don't pick up the phone because I'm just saying I can't do it. I can't do it. I, I cannot allow. I'm on a limited supply of energy. And if I swipe this energy card, it's going to ring NSF, insufficient funds. Because I cannot supply you with the level of energy that you need. Some of you all get on the phone with people and don't realize that they can transfer a spirit into your ear they will drain you and they will not be happy until they have transferred their energy to you and you know it's the energy transfers because when you try to give them advice they said well, i ain't call you for all of that i just called the vent but listen all i got is advice in this season that's all i can give you let's get to it let's get to it let's talk about it let's bring my prophetic people like make some noise let me tell you a secret about prophets and prophetic people the truth is is you got to catch us on the right day you got to catch us on the right day because if you catch me on the wrong day, I'm going to say you need to repent. <laughs> well, I can't figure out what's wrong. You're shacking. <laughs> 
You might catch me on the road there and I might say something crazy. Don't listen. Get to the point. What, what do you want? <laughs> Can I tell you why that is? The reason why that is is because you have got to be careful when you understand that your soul connects people to the spirit realm. And everything that comes out of the spirit realm ain't God. Something, and some of you all may have a hard time, but listen, this, this, you'll be okay. There's a thin line between the prophetic and witchcraft. There's a thin line between the prophetic and witchcraft. And just that quick, you can switch. Just that quick, if somebody gets you in the wrong energy, if somebody gets you in the wrong space, if somebody gets you in the wrong place, you'll be doing Pentecostal voodoo. I'm telling you what I know. It is too easy, and you've got to make sure you keep your spirit. Listen, it ain't even about you, baby. I'm not even being selfish in this season. I'm being self full Because if I'm not okay, I'm going to help you. If I'm feeling like I'm going to lose my mind, you're going to need that gift that's in me. And listen, listen, there are still some pieces of you that God is processing. If you don't keep that under the blood and on the altar, the wrong person might trigger a part of you that God is still processing. Yes, I speak in tongues. Absolutely, baby. I speak in tongues with the best of them. I speak in tongues. But let me tell you something. If it's a day where I've been purged out in God and processed, I might say something from the Old Testament. <laughs> and say it well. And then I'm going to get my spouse to translate. Listen, I need you to hear this. Your relationships require that you are scrutinizing. So number one, if it doesn't fit, don't force it. Number two, stop trying to make people agree with you. And number three, stop trying to be visible. The blind will never see you. Stop trying to be visible. Particularly, and I want you to hear this. Particularly if you've struggled with rejection. If you have struggled with the spirit of rejection, you will find yourself in seasons trying to stand on your back, trying to get people to notice you. Because when you have a spirit of rejection, you think that the reason why people aren't connecting to you is because something is wrong with you. Can I tell you something? Some people aren't connecting to you because the Lord is saving you from diabolical connections. He will make people reject you. He will make jobs turn you down. He will make friendships turn their back on you. He will make people break up with you. Can I tell you something? Everybody that's in this room right now, that if you're in a relationship and you are so grateful for your relationship and you're happy about your relationship, I promise you that there was about 10 crazies that you had to go through to get to the one you got now. And if the Lord did not tear that foolishness up, you ain't going to say, man, that's a <laughs> Listen, there was a list of crazies that I had to gradually come up from. Can I tell you something? It is not until you can look back and say, God, thank you for delivering me from that foolishness that you begin to appreciate when people reject you or push you away. You don't force it. You don't fight it. You say, you know what? Maybe I just wasn't supposed to be at that job. Listen, I feel an anointing here. I'm about to free somebody from anxiety in this room. Listen, th th there's some stuff that just wasn't supposed to work, and it's okay. There's some stuff. I know we shout over open doors, and we tell people to name it, claim it, blab it, and grab it, and call those things to be not as though they were. Some stuff just wasn't supposed to work. It just wasn't supposed to happen. And if it did work, it would have maneuvered you out of the will of God for your life. You ought to get into a place where you start thanking God for the stuff that didn't work. I'm not just talking about attacks. I'm talking about stuff that you didn't even realize it was an attack, but it was in disguise. Thank God that it didn't work, that it did not come together. There are some things in your life. There are some things that you are around that God will put a hindrance there. And you rebuking the hindrance and not knowing you rebuking God. The Lord told him, he said, I wrecked your ship. 
He said, I'm the one that taught. They said, well, who did it? Who did it? He said, I did it. I wrecked your ship. I preached a message here about two years ago called, Lord, wreck my ship. Wreck it. Wreck my ship. Anything that I am in, anything that I'm connected to, any person I got around me that is not of you, I want you to mess that thing up. Because what I have figured out is that it is, if it's not of God, it's going to drain my energy. It's going to drain my mind. It's going to drain my life. But if this thing be of God, no demon, no devil, no witch, no warlock has the power to destroy it. Can I say it the way that the songwriter in the 90s said it? What God has for me, it is for me. I believe it to be true. I know it to be true. Can I tell you something? Sometimes what you want is right in front of you. You just can't see it because you think that what's supposed to be in your life is on the other side of the world. What God has for you is in proximity to what he told you to do. Not in proximity to where you want to be. Ooh. Not in proximity to where you want to be. What God, listen, listen, whatever God has for you is in proximity to the last thing he told you to do. Well, I don't see it. I just don't see it. Where is it? God, God, you told me you were going to do this. And, and I've been heavens opened, earth invaded, storehouses unlocked, and miracles created. God, where is it? Can I tell you? It is in the yes. It is in the surrender. It is in the yielded place. God is going to posture the thing that you want that is connected to the thing he has told you to do. And it will be in the proximity of the last instruction that the Lord gave you. I want you to hear this. I want you to hear this. Can I tell you something? In this season, the Lord said, I am getting ready to release the right relationships. I'm getting ready to release. I told you last week, Jonathan was coming. The Lord said, I'm getting ready to do something supernatural with you. Well, I'm going to connect you with some people that you don't have to explain yourself to. I'm going to connect you to some people that you don't have to tell your whole life story to. I'm going to connect you with some people that are genuinely going to celebrate you and genuinely be happy about what God is doing in your life. You will not spend the next eight months, God I praise you, listen, I, I feel the anointing on this, you will not spend the next eight months wondering who do I have around me, but you're going to spend the next eight months in peace that the circle that God is putting around you are going to be people that are going to pray for you, cover you and protect you. In this season, I am not going to have wolves in sheep's clothing. I'm not going to have people that are under a diabolical assignment of distraction. But in this season, God is connecting me with people that are going to push me and undergird me. And listen, some of you said, well, apostle, I'm lonely right now and I don't have as many people around me that I used to have around me. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Let me explain something to you. What God did was cut the fat out of the meat. What the Lord did was uh, uh, you listen he, he put the bones out of the chicken and the Lord said in this season I'm removing all of the excess out of your life I'm removing all of the extra out of your life people that operate under an extra spirit they have extra assignments they have extra agendas the Lord said you will no longer lose sleep over the people that are around you but I'm getting ready to put the right connections in your life can I tell you something the Bible said that the Lord connected Elizabeth to Mary and when Elizabeth showed up to Mary the Bible said that Mary watch this who is carrying something in her spirit I want you to hear me I want to teach this I want you to hear me Mary is carrying something in her spirit that has never pre-existed in the world before she is carrying something in her belly that is going to shift the way that people do life. And she is having a hard time explaining oh Lord, what it is that she is carrying because people don't understand how a ghetto girl from Nazareth can be carrying the level of vision and perspective and insight that she has. It ain't God until your friends and your family begin to think you a little crazy. It ain't God until the people you have been around all your life think you're doing too much. 
It is not God until your vision makes you uncomfortable to where you are almost nervous sharing with people what it is that God is about to do in your life. Can I tell you something? Mary is carrying something in her spirit that she did not ask for, that does not line up with anything that she grew up in, but it is something prophetic that was birthed from an encounter with God. What Mary did, watch this. She didn't go trying to explain herself to the city council because you know what they think. You know what they think. What they think about Mary is that she's been out there in these streets. Okay. What they think about Mary is that Mary has been doing something strange for a little piece of change. And can I share something with you? Some people are going to be upset with you and angry because they don't understand how you got what you got. Because the truth is, is they know where you've been and they know what you've been through. And they want to attribute your happiness to something diabolical and evil. But the Lord told me to tell you, don't explain what I'm doing in you to people who are not on your level of comprehension. Don't open up your mouth until you get to Elizabeth's house. Don't say anything until you get to Elizabeth's house. Elizabeth, who like Mary, watch this, is carrying in her belly the baby John. And the Bible said, God, I praise you in this place, that as Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, something in her belly began to leap. The Lord is saying, your next relationships should only be connected to people that make what's in your belly leap. If they don't make your belly leap, they are not the one that you are supposed to be connected to. There are some people that are coming into your life. And the Lord said, and I want you to hear me. The Lord said that between now and the end of this year, there are some long-term relationships that you are about to be loosed into. And these relationships, for some of you, they are romantic. For most of you, they are not. These relationships are going to cause what's in you to stir and begin to leap. Mary is pregnant. Elizabeth is pregnant. Mary is too young and Elizabeth is too old. Mary is carrying Jesus and Elizabeth is carrying John. John takes them to the water. Jesus takes them to the wine. There is a correlation between water and wine. When Jesus turned the water into wine, it was not just him trying to tell them, look what I can do. What Jesus was showing them prophetically was I have the ability to take water what was and to recreate it into what it is to become water is symbolic of knowledge and wine is symbolic of revelation that's why Jesus says that you cannot put new wine in old wine skins and some of you are trying to take wine and put it in old wine skins old relationships old connections but the Lord said I need you to connect with Elizabeth who is carrying the water and I'm going to connect the wine that's in you and when I I put it together, it's going to make sense. Look at somebody say, it's getting ready to make sense. Everything is getting ready to come in order. Can I tell you something? When you get around the right people, they will give language to where you've been. They will give language to your struggle. I could not explain what I went through in the fifth grade and what I went through back in uh, 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 Milwaukee, what I went through back in Chicago, what I went through back in Columbus. But God said, I'm going to connect you with some people that's going to say, baby, you don't have to explain yourself. But the spirit that is within me bears witness with the spirit that is within you. You don't have to fight it. You don't have to force it. You don't have to make them believe. You don't have to make them see it. They see you in the spirit. Somebody say, see me in the spirit. That's why the Bible said, know no man after the flesh, but know them by way of the spirit. Can I tell you something? Water is symbolic of knowledge. 
and wine is symbolic of revelation and until you get water knowledge and until you get wine revelation you are not in the right relationships the right relationships will loose water and wine the right relationships will loose revelation which means that the relationships that God has taken me to is preparing me for the place that God is about to take me into which means that watch this I'm not going to have to be your friend and leave you at home but because we are on the same level I can take you with me and the Lord is saying I'm getting ready woo, to give you some networking power and some levels of relationship that are going to interconnect you into rooms that you could not get to on your own some people that's going to say I know him I know her let her come through the gate let her come through the rope why not because of anything I did in the flesh but it is a connection in the realm of the spirit don't you know that there are some people that cannot see you until you get on another frequency until you get on another plane until you get in another round can I share something with you brick come here real quick uh, 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 son come here real quick get, uh, uh, get up here I want to show you something that's so powerful that I need you to see right now I want to show you something that's going to be essential that where God is about to take you Friday come here real quick I want to show you something I want you to stand right here and I want uh, 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 one of you stand in front of that speaker the other one standing from the other speaker I, I, I want you to come come with me come with me can I share something with you can I share something with you let me share something with you what the Lord is trying to tell you and I hope y'all can see this analogy watching me live what the Lord is trying to tell you is that you're not going to get to the next level watch this by doing anything in the natural it's a spiritual connection that means that you can't manipulate these connections you can't kiss people butt for this connection. There are some connections that it has to happen by way of the spirit. You can't twerk your way into this connection. There are some connections that are only going to happen by way of the spirit. Can I tell you something? This is the issue. And, and, and I really struggle with trying to explain this. And, and this is what the Lord just gave to me. I, I really want you to hear this. This is the CEO. This is the multi-million dollar publisher. This is the level that you're currently on. That's the place that God has to get you to. But see, this is the thing, is there's too much in your past that will try to come up as a hindrance to stop you from getting there in the natural. So you don't come from a long line of millionaires. You don't necessarily come from a long line of people that have access to these realms. So if God is going to do something in your bloodline that has never happened before, you can't get there by way of the natural. So the only way you're going to get there is by way of the spirit, which means that God has to connect you with people in the spirit realm that have the power to pull you into a new dimension. They can't see you right now in this realm. I need you to hear me. They can't see you. And I'm not saying they can't see you because you're not in the right room. You can be in the room and they can't see you. You can be in the room. You can be on the elevator with them. It's, it, and it's only the two of y'all and they cannot see you. It's almost like you don't even exist. And the reason why that is is because the frequency level that you put out, the frequency level that is based on the radio wave of the season that you are in determines who has the power to hear you. So if your level is too low, they cannot hear you in this realm. Now, see, this is what it is. We say, well, I'm powerful, and I'm prophetic, and I'm anointed, and I'm a bishop, and I'm an apostle. I operate in heavenly places. That's all good and gravy. But until your discipline operates in the level of your anointing, that you are not going to this realm. And you might think they demons, and you might think that they're not saved, and this CEO ain't got the Holy Ghost, and this CEO ain't baptized in fire, but that CEO has discipline. I'm so tired... I'm so tired of these lazy Christians that think because you do a hook of Mashanda that God is going to give you the whole business. Ah, nah, the whole company is mine. Reba sai, be ye unseated. Reba ba 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 ba. But you come to work late. You have a nasty attitude. Whenever they give you a project, you turn it in late. You come back from lunch late. You mean to all your coworkers, but you talking about I'm an I'm an anointed. I breathe fire. I breathe it upon you. Fire on the supervisor. Can I tell you something? The only thing that's going to happen is you're going to be back on Indeed asking 
asking God to give you another job because it is not just connected to your anointing it is connected to your discipline it is connected to your discipline David it is connected to your discipline you want a promotion go to work on time why do I need the anointing then I need the anointing because there are some spirits between this realm and that one that even when you are disciplined that are going to try to stop you from going to the next level. They know you're a hard worker. So what they're going to try to make you feel like is that your prayers can't get past the ceiling. So what the Lord is saying is I've got to begin to breathe another level of discipline in you. So this is what I'm going to tell you to do. For six months, I feel the anointing in here. For six months, I want you to fast every Wednesday. And I want you to get up at 5 a.m. every day and pray. And we think the Lord tell us to do something like that because he wants to be more deep. You're like, God want me more deep. Uh -uh. Because the promotion he's about to give you requires that you are out of bed by 5 a.m. So he's training your spirit to begin to take on a new level of discipline because of where you're going. Well, if I'm supposed to get there, I'm just going to get there. No! You're only going to get there through your obedience. So what this woman of God says is, you know what? The Lord's called me to be up there. And, and the Lord is calling me to this realm. Now, everybody I've always known is here. And it's familiar here. And it's very comfortable here. And I know this. I know this well. Am I preaching to anybody? Yes. I know this realm very well. And I'm having to decide, God, I praise you. Do I want to be comfortable or do I want my destiny? But I can't have both. Which means that what I'm going to have to do is I want you to follow me. I'm going to have to start reading the right books. Not just the Bible. Amen. But reading the right books. And reading the right books takes me to another level. Now here's the thing is, over here you're going to be a little lonely. Because you know everybody that's over here, and they still can't see you, even though you're working hard. But the Lord is saying, you got just a few more steps, getting ready to open up the door for you. So you say, okay, you know what? I don't feel like coming to church. I want to stay home. I'm, I'm, I'm not in the mood, but I need this impartation. So I'm going to do something different. I'm not going to sit by my friends today. I'm going to do something different. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to posture myself for the next level. Take a step up. Okay. Now I'm on another realm. I'm on another level. Now, Lord, I see myself getting closer. I see myself getting closer. Not yet. Not yet. Still we're good. I see myself getting closer. I see myself th this close to, to where God is calling me to be. And, and now my name is starting to be put into the wind because, because of the fact that I'm elevating my mind, I'm putting myself on a higher frequency where, where people will begin to pick up my satellite signal. See, I'm moving from the AM to the FM station. I'm moving to a higher frequency where I'm becoming more clear about who I am and what God has called me to do. Now my destiny is intact. My integrity is intact. Now when I say I'm going to show up, I show up. When I say I'm going to call people back, I call them back. And when I say that I can't call you back, I'm just going to tell you I just can't call you back. I can't do it. Can, can I tell you something? Growth is also admitting what you can't do. Growth is also knowing how to say no. Here I am on this level. And I'm standing right here on this level. And the Lord is saying, you got one more step to take. And that's the willingness to completely release all of the relationships from your past. That's familiar. And I know you, the enemy's going to lie to you and tell you you're about to be alone. But the first thing, I'm getting ready to go. The first thing that God is going to tell you. He told them, separate yourself. Come out from among them and be ye separated. Am I telling you you can't talk to people? I'm telling you, that. I'm not saying that. I want you to hear me. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. But you got to know how to talk to them and be separated. You got to know how to interact with them and still be different. Yeah. You got to know how to, how, to, how to go out to eat with them and still know who you are and where you're going. Because the Lord's saying the moment that you are willing to release that, 
I'm going to pull you up to where you belong. And I'm getting ready to. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm getting ready to put you in your place. I'm getting ready to put you in your place. And when you first get up here, the lights are real bright. It's blinding because you don't always know what's ahead of you. But the Lord is telling me to tell you this, and everybody that's watching me. If you take these next steps of consecration that I'm calling you to, I'm getting ready to pull you up to another round and another dimension. Can I tell you something? What you would discover when you get up here on that level, and I want you all to hear me, I want everybody to hear me. Some of the people that you, we love to demonize success to make ourselves feel okay. They're successful because they ain't saved. You will discover that some of these CEOs got more Holy Ghost than some of the, the most of the folk in the church. Pepsi was founded by a man that was on a fast for 30 days. We fast so that we can exalt our holiness over other people. They fast because they know that in the spirit realm there's access to new information and ideas. I don't just pray in the spirit because I feel something. I pray in the spirit because when I pray in the spirit, it unlocks information. It unlock, unlocks frequencies and insight in my life. Can I tell you something? I want you to hear me. The Lord said, and we're getting ready to go, for the next three minutes as you worship, I'm going to begin to show you the relationships that you are to cling to and the ones you are to release. I'm going to show you the relationships that you are to release. Your homies, your good Judies, your friends. These my people. You ain't even met your people yet. These, these, these my homies, these my folk, no. Jesus said, he that is about my father's business, that's my friend. He that is about his business is my friend. In this season, your relationships are going to be trichotomous. They're going to be spiritual. They're going to be, they're going to give you access to networks. And these relationships are going to heal you in your emotions. I hear the Lord saying this. I'm breaking the spirit of imbalance. I can't tell you. I can't tell you how many times I've had to release relationships that I did not understand why. Just because you're doing the same thing doesn't even mean you can be connected. Well, we're both worship leaders. Well, we're both pastors. Well, we're both musicians. But their discipline level is low. And you are being influenced by that discipline level. Get around people that don't just do what you do, but they do it on the level you're trying to do it. I'm going to say this, and I got to prophesy. I'm, I'm going to do this real quick. I'm going to prophesy to everybody in here. Real quick. And I'm going to start off with you three, and then I'm going to give a prophetic word to, to you four. And first to you, give a word to. And then I'll give a word to the musicians. I want, you all, I want you three to hear me. You all are being called to higher levels of leadership. You're being called. No longer can you let fear control you. You can't do it anymore. This is the season that you've been praying for. Because you know your potential, you know your gifts, you know your ability. You have an ability. Listen, woman of God, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to put you on the spot. I'm really not. I have no intention of doing this. You've been in this church since 2013. And I have known 
since you walked in here, the level of anointing the Lord was calling you to. And you walked around the offering plate back at the warehouse, and the Lord spoke to me and revealed to me who you were. You have to release people that don't know who you are. You can't even try to show them who you are because the blind can't see. There are some relationships even from your past you got to release. I'm going to tell you why. Because what God is about to do through you is getting ready to put your name in the wind. And you can't get caught up in nobody else's mess. You can't get caught up in nobody else's opinions. You can't get caught up in anybody else's foolishness. You got to protect your name, woman of God. Because of where God is about to take you. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? The Lord is getting ready to birth you out of the womb of the Spirit. The Lord is getting ready to birth you out into another place of prayer, another place of consecration. The Lord says, separate yourself. The Lord taught you prayer at a young age. The Lord taught you the prophetic at a young age. The Lord taught you the ways of the Spirit at a young age. You've been a birther. And the Lord said that, yes, you have even birthed your children out in the spirit realm. But that was practice for a whole generation of young women that you were to birth out. The Lord said, practice is over. It's time for you to get to work. The Lord said, I'm getting ready to send them in through those doors. And God said, as they come in, they're going to be attached to your womb. Which means that anything you attach to, they become attached to. So the Spirit of the Lord says, purify yourself. Because I'm getting ready to take you. Lord, let the fire of God be hers. Let the fire of God be hers. You are a weapon of power. You are a vessel of fire. You will stir their bellies. You will stir their bellies. You will stir. I bind false Elizabeths. I bind false Elizabeths. Woo, I feel an anointing here. I feel an anointing here. Let your fire come upon her. Hey, weapon of power. In this season, I'm under instruction, and I don't normally do this, but the Lord revealed to me that you have even wanted to be a spiritual daughter, but you did not know how to ask. Yeah. You didn't know how to ask. And the Spirit of the Lord told me to begin to pour into you because he's getting ready to burst something out of your belly. He's getting ready to burst something out of your belly. He's getting ready to burst something out of your belly. Come on, you three, line up. You line up, line up, line up, line up. Woo, there's a heavy anointing here. There's a heavy anointing here. I don't know how we're going to do this, but... I don't know how we're going to do this, but I'm going to minister to you too. There's a stirring that's coming. And I want you all to hear me. There's a stirring that's coming. The Lord did not just bring you all to this ministry just to walk in truth, but the Lord has brought you here to unleash the next dimension that's in your spirit. You are glory carriers. A glory carrier is one that carries the manifestation of God for the earth, which means they will never fully see him until God has the power to open you up and reveal himself through you. The Spirit of the Lord said that, and I really hear the word miracles, that there's getting ready to be a miracle dimension that God is going to loose upon each of you. There's a miracle realm that God is going to loose upon each of you. And the Spirit of the Lord says that I'm getting ready to break this yoke that has tried to suffocate the anointing that's on your life. 
and I'm getting ready to loose a fresh anointing upon you. The Spirit of God said that there's this suffocating spirit that has um, uh, 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 been on you. The Spirit of God says he breaks it and he looses you into another realm. He, whoa, looses you into another dimension. Let your fire come. Oh, Let your fire come upon her, Adonai. Oof. Man of God, the Lord is getting ready to do something supernatural through you in this season. The Lord said you're getting ready to go through 60 days of intensive healing. And this intensive healing is only going to come forth through your weeping. The Lord said you're going to weep like you have never wept before in your life over the next 60 days. And the Lord is saying, the reason why I must do this is because I'm going to purify your eyes. I'm going to purify your vision. Um, it's almost been like this shakiness, but the Lord said, I'm going to purify your vision that you're going to see clearly what I'm doing in the midst of you. And the Lord is saying, what I'm getting ready to do through you, even in this ministry, it's going to usher you into new dimensions. It's going to usher you into new waves and new realms. The Spirit of Grace says to you, I'm even healing you. I'm healing you. And the reason why the Lord is bringing this healing is so that these relationships are able to take you to the next level that God is taking you to. The Lord is saying that he's surrounding you with people that see your brokenness and they see your pain. And I even want to say this to you. I know you've received me as your leader, but I want you to prepare. I have to mentor what is in your belly because the Lord said there's an assignment for nations in your spirit. I hear international voices. I hear languages. And I hear the Lord saying that I've even been dealing with you about learning different languages because I'm getting ready to open up supernatural doors for you. I'm getting ready to take you into a supernatural realm. The Spirit of the Lord said that I'm even healing your father wounds. The Lord said I'm healing your brokenness. The Lord is saying that you can exhale. The Lord is saying that you can trust. The Lord is saying you're in a safe space. The Lord is saying you can let your wall down. God is saying it is okay, I got you. I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying, Calvin, I've never led you astray. I have never left you. I have never hurt you. The Spirit of the Lord said that I lead you into destiny. I lead you into your prophetic purpose. I lead you into healing. I free you from uh, a brokenness. The Lord frees you from pain. Musicians, give me two minutes. Can you all lift up that, that sound real quick? I need to minister to him out of the mic real quick.
Lift up your hands. The Lord is doing something through you that is supernatural, is unique. Whoa. Oh, my God. Spirit of anxiety, I command you to let them go right now. These heart palpitations in the middle of the night, I break it right now. I break it right now. I break it right now. You are not having a heart attack. I break it in the name of Jesus Christ. I come against panic attacks. I speak a spirit of safety on you. I speak safety in your mind. I speak that you will believe in the safety. Woo! I speak that you will believe in the safety. The Lord is saying, you're going to be so free to be yourself in this season. You're going to be so free to be yourself, free to dance, free to worship, free to be uniquely you, not judged, not in fear. But the Lord said, free to be your unique prophetic self. The Lord has been dealing with you about a new hobby uh, uh, to get involved in. The Spirit of the Lord has been dealing with you. Uh, there's something artistic that the Lord is releasing, that the Lord is birthing in your life. The Lord said it's going to flow and it's going to bring healing. It's going to bring restoration and it's going to bring peace. I loose you into it in the name of Jesus. I loose you into governmental connections. I loose you into divine connections. I declare that the Lord said I'm even healing your reflexes. There's something that's been in your reflexes where you've been experiencing like this out of control, jerking, out of control. But the Spirit of the Lord said I heal you. It is tied from the abuse to your childhood. But the Lord said, I take the sting of the abusive woman out of your reflexes. I take the sting of the hits out of your arms. I take the sting of the hits out of your legs. For as you cried, said the Lord, I heard your cry. I hear your cry. And I hear you, said God. I hear you. I free you. I free you, said the Spirit of the living God. Everyone stretch your hands towards the musicians. Father, we lose a fresh anointing upon them. We declare, God, that you take them into new realms, that you take them into new territories, that you loose them in the supernatural realms of favor, of copious blessings. We decree and declare, God, that you are their peace and that you give them the direction and clarity concerning the future. We loose an anointing of freedom. We loose an anointing of clarity. The Spirit of the Lord says unto you all that you will not be unsure that you will not be without faith, that you will not operate in a realm of not knowing which move to make. For the Lord said, I shall reveal myself to you as I did the children of Israel, where I was a pillar of fire by night and a cloud by day. Yea, though you all may be in a night season, the Spirit of the Lord says that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Joy comes in the morning. I usher you, say the Lord, into a new beginning. I usher you, say the Lord, into a new season of freedom, into a new season of focus, into a new season of wholeness. I heal you, say the Lord. I restore you, say the Lord. We loose an anointing even over them. Come on, I need you all praying. We loose an anointing. I hear the Lord saying that I'm even going to heal bodies. The Lord breaks fear and anxiety off of you. The Lord breaks anxiety concerning your futures. We lose a fresh anointing, a refreshing spirit upon you. There's a headache. The Spirit of the Lord said, I'm healing your headache. I'm healing your headache. The Spirit of God is even breathing life onto the left side of your brain. The Spirit of God says, there's a refreshing anointing that's coming. You will not be attacked in your mind. You will not be attacked in your mind. The Spirit of the Lord says that there is healing coming into your mind. Said the Spirit of the living God. Somebody give the Lord your praise. Come on. Woo! Woo! Listen, I want you to get a seat to sow right now. I want you to get a seat to sow. I want 25 people to sow a $30 seed right now. This is supernatural anointing. 
do me a favor I know we social distancing if you don't want to touch their back you don't have to but just touch somebody's back or point to their back and say I command every dagger to fall out Oof. Oof. I command every dagger to fall out the spirit of betrayal is breaking off of y'all right now spirit of betrayal is breaking the spirit of betrayal is breaking the spirit of betrayal is breaking the spirit of betrayal is breaking. The spirit of betrayal is breaking. The spirit of betrayal is breaking. It's breaking. It's breaking. It's breaking. It's breaking. I can't move on if I'm still mad at you. But I ain't even mad anymore. I'm moving on to my destiny. I'm moving on to my purpose. I'm moving on to my assignment. I'm moving on to my calling. I'm moving forward. Come on, begin to sow that seed now. Woo. Come on, we're getting ready to go in about one minute, but I dare you to worship God. Woo. Ha, ya, ya, ha, ha, ha. You can sow via Cash App. You can sow uh, via PayPal, paypal.me, or you can sow via uh, phglobalnetwork.org. Woo. Sow that seed now. Sow that seed now. The anointing of copious blessings is being loose over many of you as you sow that seed. I feel an unusual anointing. The Lord is... Are, are, are releasing new networks. Woo! Ah. Repeat after me. Say, I release the familiar. I release my comfort zone and I embrace my future. I embrace greatness and I embrace a new anointing. Say new relationships, prophetic relationships, come to me now in Jesus' name. Come on, worship them in right now. As we prepare to go, we're still sowing that seed. In this house, many of you are about to be Jonathan's and David's for each other. Some of you are going to be Elizabeth's and Mary's for each other. The Lord said, get ready in this house. Some of the people that are part of this ministry that you haven't been connected to, you're about to be connected to. And you're going to be connected to them because you have the ability to quicken what's in them and they're going to quicken what's in you. You don't know it, but you all have been in the same discipline process. And the Lord's about to bring unification in this season. It's being loosed by the fire of God and the water of the Spirit. We decree it to be so right now in the name of Jesus. Woo, we decree it to be so. <laughs> Let's get ready to go. I see an, um, there's an angelic presence here and it's very heavy. In the, in, there's an angelic presence here. There is a stirring that is coming. There is a stirring that is coming. No longer will we even call the intercessors the intercessors, but they will be the Shamar team in this house because there is a new sound that's about to come from those that intercede, those that ward, those that pray. There's a fresh anointing that's being released. Woof! I sense something, a lot of angelic activity. Spirit of the living God, we glorify you for what you've done in this house. I ask you to bless this recording team. 
that's been faithful during this season. And God, even as we transition into reconvening, reassembling, we thank you that the level of anointing that this ministry has been under will be higher. The level of glory, the weight of glory will be more intense. It will be stronger. Father, let your fire be all in and through this place. And God, I thank you, oh God, that not only are you bringing us back together, but there are people who have never been here that are coming from the north, from the south, from the east, from the west. We call them in from every corner of this city. And we declare and decree in the strong name of Jesus Christ that a great revival is being loosed from this place. A great revival is being loosed from this house. And many shall come in here and they shall be activated in the prophetic and in their callings and in their destiny. We glorify you for this new season. A rebirth, a refreshing, a reassembling, a reconnecting, a rejuvenation. We glorify you, Father for this time of refreshing we thank you lord jesus we give you the glory out in the praise it is in the strong name of jesus christ that we pray all the degree say it is so it is so come on everybody it is so and so it is